All right, guys, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? Sorry for the delay. Had a couple things going on right now that I had to handle. All right, so I hope everybody had a great 4th of July holiday weekend. My name is Matt Garland, branch manager, NMLS number 58700. Um, a little bit late, a little bit tardy, so excuse me. Um, had a lot of calls to make before I got on the live. So, I'm doing this for Dolo today. My partner in crime, Toops Production, is not here. So, I had to get things set up a little bit differently than I normally have it. Today, we're going to hit up the board. All right? So, salutations, Erica. Thank you for joining. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm playing with this angle a little bit because it looks a little sideways to me. But whatever, who cares? Again, welcome to episode 8. Rants and Gems. Today we're going to talk about Fannie Mae Homestyle Loans. So if you haven't seen uh, my episode on FHA 203Ks, please go to that. Also, make sure you check that out. Also, check out last week's episode where I had Miss Business on here and we were talking about tax planning and tax strategies for real estate and business owners. But Fannie Mae Homestyle is a terrific program. I love I love, I love Fannie Mae Homestyle um, Loan. It's a conventional mortgage, and it gives you a little bit more flexibility than the FHA 203K. Um, Fannie Mae Homestyle allows you, salute, salute, good evening, everybody. I am checking comments, too, as I'm talking to you. Before I get to finishing this, right, I know I'm a little crazy going back and forth right now. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you have any questions, Matthew.Garland at flagstar.com is my is my email. I'm going to put it in my description as well. And this is going to be a call-in show too. So in about 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to give you out a call-in number. You can call in and you can ask me your questions. All right? If you're not on my Instagram, MG the Mortgage Guys, the Instagram, you can ask me a question over there. You can send me a DM as well. So let's get back to the show. Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae Homestyle. Love it. Great program. Gives you a little bit more flexibility, like I was saying, than FHA 203K. FHA only allows you to use for primary residence. Um, Fannie Mae Homestyle gives you the flexibility to use it not just for your primary residence, but you can use it if you're going to buy a vacation home and you can use it for investment properties, which is completely different from FHA. Now, let's talk about the credit. What do you need to qualify for a Fannie Mae Homestyle loan? So like any loan that you're applying for, whether it's conventional, whether it's FHA, VA, USDA, let's start with your borrower, the borrower documents, right? And your borrower credit qualifications. First of all, your minimum credit score is a 620 with a Fannie Mae Homestyle loan, all right? And that's whether if you're buying a primary, secondary or investment property, the minimum credit score is a 620 credit score, all right? The documents that you need, if you are a W-2 wage earner, you need last two years W-2s, copy of your ID, 30 days of pay stubs, last two months of bank statements to get pre-approved. That's your initial documents. If you're self-employed, you gotta, you gotta um, include your taxes, your business and your personal taxes, Depending on how you file your business, you may be required to submit your K-1s as well for the last two years, all right? So that's the typical document required for any loan, but obviously once you go into underwriting, underwriters are always gonna request more information. Now, like, like the FHA 203K, there's always two parts to any, any loan, all right? You have credit qualification, which is you, the borrower, and then you have the project, which in this case is the rehab. What are you looking to do to renovate? That has to be approved as well. So that process is a little bit different than the 203K. Now, to be honest with you guys, the 203K is a little bit easier than the Fannie Mae Homestyle when it comes to getting your project approved. With a 203K, if you're, putting, if you're getting less than 35,000 in repairs and you're doing a 203K streamline, you don't need a HUD consultant. You don't need anything, right? You could just get your scope of your work from your contractor, submit it, and pretty much get approved to get that $35,000. As long as 
you know, you're meeting with it, you're within the FHA loan limits. But with a, a Fannie Mae home style, your contractor gets underwritten also. They have to go through an, a separate approval process. So it's very important for your for anyone who's going to watch this video, whether you're watching it live tonight, or you're going to watch it on a replay, just like the 203K, make sure you have your contract in place before you find a home. Don't go into contract if you don't have a contractor because your contractor needs to have all their licenses, they need to have the insurance, they need to have all their ducks in a row. We need to get um, that paperwork for, from them and we need to vet them to make sure that they're, they're, they're credit worthy. A um, little bit different than the FHA. FHA doesn't require the contract to be credit worthy, but Fannie Mae does. So I've had situations, personal situations, where people have chosen contractors and the contractors had terrible credit or they had maxed out lines of credit on a credit, on a credit report. And we couldn't use that contractor. And the reason why we, we declined those contractors is can they really, do they really have the capability of paying um, for that job? Now, all of you have been watching me, and if, you don't, if you're new to me and if you don't know this, when you're doing any kind of reimbursement loan, right, the, the, or rehab loan, I should say, the, the rehab money is given back to you in a reimbursement. It's not given to you up front. So if you're doing a hundred K worth of renovation, you're not going to get a check for at closing for a hundred K. You're going to, your contractor has to be in position to pay for, um, or to start the job and then get reimbursed. So it's done in phases, it's done in draws, but I'm gonna get to that in a second. Let's, let's take it from the, let's take it from the top, right? So with, uh, Fannie Mae home style, if it's a primary residence, you can do a one to four family property. Okay. Now, with your with your one families, you can go up to ninety seven percent. You can do ninety seven percent financing. Okay. Ninety seven percent financing with your one family. With a two unit, if it's your primary residence, Fannie Mae will only allow you to do. 85% financing, so you have to put down 15%. And if it's a three to four family, you have to put down 25%. And this is if your primary residence. So the edge on this will go to FHA 203K because FHA 203K will get allows you to go up to three and a half percent down payment, one to four family. Fannie Mae is a little bit more stricter when it comes to their down payment requirements. So I'm gonna repeat that again. If it's your primary residence, one families and condos, you can go up to 97% financing. For two families, 85% financing, meaning you have to put down 15%. For three or four families, you have to put down 25%. So again, all you guys who follow me, we go through the four, three, two, one method or the BRRRR as a first time home buyer. I always tell you guys start off with the FHA 203K or a regular FHA loan for this reason. Because the conventional loan, you're going to have to put a little bit more skin in the game to get approved for the financing. All right. So second homes, if you're looking to buy a vacation home, that vacation home or vacation condo, you can do 10%, 10% down or 90% financing. And for your investment properties, now, it's only for the second home, only one family or condos. And for investment properties, it's only for one families and condos as well. All right? So, with the, with the, with the investment property, you have to put down at least 15% down payment. All right? So, the bank is going to give you 85% down payment. Now, how, how does... The, the rehab money work. Now, here's another thing with FHA that I like better. FHA will give you up to, if you're purchasing a home, up to 100, 110% of your rehab monies to get done, right? So basically, make a long story short, let me break it down into layman terms for you. So with the FHA 203K, 
you can go up to let's just say that the you're buying a house for fifty thousand, you need fifty k worth of work. The house comes appraised for ninety five thousand, right? But your work is fifty thousand. FHA will still allow you to do that. With uh, Fannie Mae Homestyle, that's a no go. You can't do that. The ARV max on a Fannie Mae Homestyle is seventy five percent, right? So your max renovation monies you can get, you can't exceed seventy five percent ARV. Now, how do you calculate your ARV? Like I just did in that scenario, you're buying it for fifty k. Your house, the after repair value is a hundred k. You can only go up to seventy five k on your loan amount. So Fannie Mae in that situation will only give you 25% down payment. <laughs> What's up everybody? Sorry, I just read in the comments. I just saw a lot of flickering in my comments, so I had to get see what y'all was talking about. <laughs> All right. So, Fannie Mae home style, only 75% ARV. They don't give you as much leeway as the FHA 203k. But you can still depending on you know, the property that you're looking to buy, you can still do a lot with a 75 ARV. Now, if you compare that to, you know, investment property loans like hard money or fix and flip loans, where you can only get 65 to 70, 65 to 70% ARV, Fannie Mae Homestyle, especially if you're buying an investment property, a one family investment property is not a bad option. All right. Now, let me go through a couple quick things, right? And I always get asked this a lot. Number of contractors, right? Maximum amount of contractors, you could have up to three licensed contractors, up to 80,000 in repairs. Only one general contractor over 80, over 80K, all right? Um, FHA, um, if you're doing a, a full tool 3K, you can have up to three licensed contractors. Self-help and do it yourself is not pro permitted at all. With FHA 203K, in limited circumstances, it can it can get approved, but for Fannie Mae to uh, for Fannie Mae Homestyle, no self help agreements are allowed. Period. Point blank. The maximum loan amount you can go up to. The maximum loan amount is based off the Fannie Mae loan limits for for your county. So, for across the nation, for a single family, four hundred eighty four thousand is the maximum loan amount. Loan amount. If you live in New York, like I do, you can go up to 726000 I believe it is, for one family. All right? The minimum repair amount. There is no minimum repair amount for Fannie Mae Homestyle. Um, is there a HUD consultant required? No. There's no HUD consultant required with a Fannie Mae Homestyle. The contractors. Most important, like I said in the beginning of this, the contractors and how they get paid is very, very important. Guys, listen, let me cut this off real quick. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe, tell your community. It's about 40 of us watching this, watching me right now. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, all right? Um, and subscribe, most importantly, and tell your community. So that's a quick little MG commercial break right there for you. Contractor payment, most important, same thing like a 203K. Your contractor, your contract is the most important factor of this. Your contractor has to be in position to start your job. So let's just say if you're doing 100 k worth of work, your contractor needs to be in position. And let's just say it's four draws, so four stages. Everything is done in draws when it comes to reimbursement loans. So at closing, you, the max you can get, if it's 100 k worth of work, the max you can get is ten thousand dollars within a week after closing you don't get a check at the closing for 10k within a week so the maximum that you can get dispersed from your rehab money is only 10 percent at closing that's not going to be enough if you have a big job to do anything right so your contractor has to be in position to do each phase and then call the lender to have an inspection done once the lender comes they inspect then if all T's across, I's are dotted, then the lender, the inspector will tell the lender it's okay to reimburse the contractor. So that's why 
with these loans, we have to vet the contractor to make sure that they are in position to pay the money. Now, some people always ask me, Matt, if I'm the homeowner, if I'm the person buying the house, if I have that cash, can I use it? No. They, Fannie Mae prohibits you, the homeowner or future buyer, to use your cash to, to start your job. Now, do people listen to that? Hell no. People work out agreements under the table all the time with their contractors. I'm just keeping it real with you, right? But I'm telling you what the guidelines are, people. Guidelines state you're not supposed to do it, so don't do it, all right? You got to make sure your contractor is in position to front the job. Then they get reimbursed, and it goes on like that till the job is completed, all right? Number of draws. You select the number of draws, but remember, every draw that you, that you have is going to cost you money. So the more draws you need, the more money it's going to cost you at closing, right? So if you say you need, each draw could be anywhere from $175 to $200 for the draw fee. Just be wise on your draws. So if you have a contractor that just wants to get paid, reimbursed rapidly, it's only going to cost you more money for draws. Most people, if they go up big jobs, they want to do three to five, three to five draws max, all right? Now, every time you're doing, anytime you're doing a, a renovation loan, you have what's, you have to update your title. That's also going to cost you as well. It's around the same price for title fees as well, but I'm not going to get into the title fees and, and the title quotes because it's different for every state. All right. Now, a contingency reserve. There are contingency reserves requ required when you're doing a renovation loan. So if you're doing 100K worth of work, typically we want to see at least 10% in your contingency reserves. So that contingency, now your, your scope of work will be 110,000 versus 100,000, all right? Now the contingency reserves are used just in case you run over budget. So you have that extra monies available to you, all right? The time that is allowed for you to complete your scope of work. 12 months you have 12 months with the fannie mae home style which i like better than the fha 203k because fha 203k only gives you six months to complete your job 12 months for fannie mae home style and then you also have a final inspection to make sure all t's across all i's are dotted before that final draw is paid out now also another thing like the 203k you're able to finance um, your mortgage payments if you're unable to live in the home while your rehab is being done. So you can finance your mortgage payments, but it has to be included into the overall scope of work, right? So let's just say your mortgage payment is gonna be $1,000 a month. I'm just using easy numbers right, right now just for this conversation. And you wanna finance six months of payments and the job is gonna take you six months and you can't live in it during that six months, you're able to do that, but again, it goes on top of you know the the, the original rehab plus the contingency reserves. So you got to keep that in mind. And remember, you're maxed out of 75 ARV, so all of this has to fit within your 75 ARV. All right. So here's a couple quick things I like about the the Fannie Mae home style, especially when we talk in investment properties. The, the primary residence, and I'm going to keep it real with you guys. You guys know me by now. If you don't know me, go look at some of my videos on um, my Instagram page, MG The Mortgage Guy, or look on my YouTube. You can kind of get an idea of how I roll, right? And I'm going to keep it 100 with you guys. I'm going to keep it real with you. If you're buying a one-family home as a primary residence, and you have 720, 760 high credit scores, and you're putting down 5%, 10%, I'm going to show you side-by-side -side numbers of the 203K and the Fannie Mae home style. But if the ARVs and everything works, I'm going to always recommend going with the Fannie Mae home style because that PMI, you're not locked into it for the life of the loan. Whereas with a FHA loan, if you put down less than 10%, your PMI is for 30 years. And if you put down 10% or more, the PMI goes away year 11. With a conventional loan, that PMI can go away once you hit 80% equity. Or you can request, let me, let me properly say this, you can request the lender to remove your PMI 
once you hit 80% um, LTV or 20% equity, and it automatically goes off at 78% loan to value. I love that about the conventional loans because you can get rid of the MI. And in most cases, that MI, that PMI can be, you know, a couple hundred dollars. Number two reason, but now if you're buying a multifamily, you're looking to do the 4321 or house hacking or anything like that, you're better off going with FHA 203K to just keep it completely honest with you. Because if you're not in a position, unless you're in a position to put down 15% and this is going to be your primary residence, then okay, we're going to go with the Fannie Mae home style. But if you're trying to take advantage of putting down 3 to 5% down payment, then we're going to go with the FHA 203K. And you guys heard my strategies about refinancing the house hacking. I'm not going to go into it right now. Another thing I like about the, the Fannie Mae Homestyle, and the main reason why I like Fannie Mae Homestyle, because I believe this is, one, this is a perfect loan for a first-time investor. Not the investor who's looking to buy a multifamily, because obviously this product will, doesn't suit for multifamilies. But for that first-time investor, that's looking to buy Airbnb, rental property, or just a long-term um, lease, or even a fix or flip, right? Because there's no prepayment penalty. Now, with the one family, like I said, you can go up to 85% LTV, but with a 75% ARV. Now, if this is a, a long-term hold, that 75 ARV comes in handy because you get that rehab money, and you can fix the one family property the way you like it and possibly Airbnb. So if you're looking to buy states like Georgia, uh, Florida, Orlando areas, you know, these real New York where you get a lot of Airbnb money, then this is a perfect program because you can get a long term 30 year fix. You can get a low interest rate um, and you don't never have to worry about refinancing again. And you can go up to 75 percent of the ARV, whereas with a hard money loan, you're going to be at eight and a half to 12 percent you can only go up to 65 70 percent financing and then at some point you're going to have to refinance out of it and it's going to cost you more money the great thing i like about the, the what fannie mae allows you to do they, they allow you to invest the deed of the home into your llc now this has to happen post closing but it doesn't trigger any repayment clause that they have in the mortgage notes because Fannie Mae understands when someone buys an investment an investment property, they want that legal protection from any liabilities. So they allow you to transfer the deed over into your business name. The debt, the mortgage will still be in your personal name, but the deed itself can go into your business name post closing not during the process not while you're in underwriting not your contract of sale can't say one two three main street is buying the house it has to be in your personal name but the deed of the home once you close you can deed the home over to your business name because you're going to be a hundred percent owner of the house and also of that llc so they allow that right so that's one of the great things that i love about the fannie mae home style try to think of that cover everything I'm not sure. I'm having a brain fart. I'm tired. I had a long weekend. Let's get to some questions. Call in 516-881-3732. If you have any questions, just call me. I think I had a minor brain freeze, but whatever. Who cares? I think I, I, I feel like I'm in blabbering my mouth for like 40 minutes almost or 30 minutes, but just call in. Let's talk. If you have any questions about Fannie Mae Homestyle, call me up 516 881 Three seven three two. I got the board out today. We can we can get to the board. We can we can analyze your deals. If you have any questions about Fannie Mae home style loans, if it's something that I didn't cover in this quick little rant about Fannie Mae home styles, ask me your questions. All right. States four one four one zero. Yes. Who's the first caller? Erica. I love Erica. Erica always up here talking it. I love it. Wendy, thank you. I appreciate I appreciate that. Like, comment, and share. Make sure y'all all like, comment, and share. Stars, what's up? Style 5, what's up? The, is the draw given directly to the contractor? Yes, the draw 
the Gemini, good, 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 good question, Gemini. That's why if you pay the money out of your pocket, right, the bank is not going to write the check to you and not the contractor, right? Because the guidelines state that the contractor is the one who's, who's supposed to pay the money out of pocket. So the money is going to the contractor. So now you got to depend on the contractor to give you your money back. Good luck with that, right? Now you base, you know what I'm saying? Good luck. You got to, you got to chase the, remember contractors, contractors. That's why they want the contractor to put the money out, Gemini. And then that way, they're the ones getting reimbursed. And they're going to do your job. Listen, I, I do a lot of these loans. The con you you have to make sure you pick a contractor. You can't go to Home Depot and get your homeboys in the street. You can't get the homeboy discount here, the homeboy discount there. You will pay probably a little bit more than what you would if you were using your own cash. Hundred percent guaranteed because the contractors who do these who do these deals, they know they have to lay out money, so they're going to charge you a little bit more. But with good negotiation, you can still good good get great pricing with it. But just but. They know they're laying out their money. So they're going to pay. And, and they're not, they're not going to pay. They're going to do the work top notch because they want to keep doing these loans because they know lenders, a lender, if they're funding these deals, they want to keep getting work. So just keep that just keep that in mind, Gemini. B, B2 to A, yo, BK to ATL, what's up? Yes, you can move it to, AT, to your LLC. Can I co-sign with the front? Listen, I can't be sitting up here reading these, these comments, guys. This, this looks crazy right now. So y'all got to call in. 516-881-3732. My man Tooks is not here working the boards. We don't got the professional cameras today. So I can't put the thing on the screen. But call in. 516-881-3732. All right? You got a question, I'll answer it. But y'all writing novels. Come on, give me a break here. <laughs> Anthony Bolton, that's definitely not on the subject. And I don't know if you can get a cash out refinance if you're on disability. I don't know. Is it possible? Yes, but I don't know what you can get. Pick up the phone, nobody's calling me. Okay, great. Somebody's calling now. Hello, Matthew speaking. Hi, Matthew. Stacey, uh, Stacey What's up, Stace? How are you? Where you calling from? I'm calling from Baltimore. I called in when you did a 203, and you were like, that's not what I was asking about. <laughs> it was the uh, home style, so yeah. now we're on, on the right topic. <laughs> yeah, now we're on the right topic. topic. I remember you. How are you today? Good, good. I was actually on the phone. I had to get off the phone so I could call in. Um, oh, let me turn my computer down because it's a little Hold on. Yeah, I, I, can hear the, I can hear me in the background. Yeah, I'm turning it down now. Okay, so I was listening to how you said that the contractors have to get vetted by the bank in order to, you know, qualify to do the home style loan. Well, my recommendation is before you get into contract, let's have the conversation with your contractor. That way, I can ask the questions to them that I know we're going we're gonna to look for, right? The, and the main thing is, listen, do you understand how you're going to get paid? And do you have the liquidity, liquidity, you know, or credit lines to start and finish this job? You know, that's the main thing. And and do you have decent credit? You know, we're not looking for the contractor to have 800 credit scores. Like, I have, I've had contractors approved with 580 credit scores, right? But they had lines of credit. You know, they were able on their business credit to show, okay, I have 100K, 200K available, and we're, we're, we're doing a 50K job or a 75K job. So that was okay. So it's not, 
I don't want nobody watching this to think that it's like this strenuous process to get a contract approved. It really isn't. It literally takes a, a week. And if we okay. do it, Sam, what I like to do is if I know who the contractor is before you get into contract stage, I'm going to vet them out. I'm going to pre-underwrite them. I'm going to get in their business. I'm going to get their references. I'm going to get their insurance. I'm going to make sure all T's across, I's are dotted before I even submit them into my underwriting department. So... But before you even sign a contract, I'm going to tell you, like, listen, this guy may be an issue because of X, Y, and Z. And if he's not an issue, then I'm going to say, stay, this is no problem. Go sign your contract. And then we submit him into underwriting the same time we're submitting you into underwriting. So it's happening simultaneously. Yeah, I mean, I've closed, I've closed Phantom Mail Homestyle Loans in 30 days. I've closed some as long as six months. Like, I've closed two or three Ks in two weeks, but I've closed some. Shoot, I have one right now that's going on for eight months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, so no two loans are alike. There's a lot that goes on, especially if you're doing a big job. You know, there's a lot that goes on with finding the right contractor. You got to get architect plans. You got it's a lot that goes on when you're doing any type of rehab, especially if it's a a large, you know, 100, 200, 300k rehab. It's a lot that goes into it. But if you're doing something small, under 100k, those are typically those are easy, like kitchens and bathrooms and you know, maybe roof and siding, something like that. That's easy. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, right? You don't want to go and try to like build a new. You can't build a new house. You can't do a tear down and rebuild with a Fannie Mae home style. But you can add like a second level. You can you can okay. do a conversion. You can take a house from a one family to a two family. But those are big jobs. So your first time doing something like this. You don't want to get yourself into that type of position and do a big job. The most common I see is kitchen, bathrooms, roofs, roofs, basements, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Works for you? That covers my question. All right. Thank you for always checking in. I really appreciate you. And make sure you like, comment, and share this with your community. No problem, anytime. All right, guys, 516-881-3732. I don't want you guys to think that this is doom and gloom with the Fannie Mae home style loan that, oh, you got to get your contract approved. You got to get your contract approved too with FHA, right? It's just not, it's a little bit, little bit more lenient with FHA 203K if you're over 35,000 repairs compared to the Fannie Mae home style. But you can still get it done. That's why you got to work with the right professional, the right loan officer who understands these loans. Because if you don't, you could be in for a nightmare. Hello, Matthew speaking. Hello. Hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, my name is Yikai. I'm uh, why I on Instagram. I talked to you before. I'm calling from Delaware. What's going on, bro? Uh, I'm chilling. I want to know about the, uh, the contractor or whatever. Like... Is it possible to be the contractor thing on your own, like to build your own stuff or everything, or is it just easier to hire a contractor to do it? Well, with a Fannie Mae home style, you're not allowed to like do like do it DIY, do it yourself, DIY. Um, with the FHA 203K, if you have three plus years experience as a contractor, a general contractor, in some cases you can do it. But, you know, it's, I'll be honest with you, it's very hard to get those self, we call it self-help. You know, those self-help agreements are very hard to get done. All right. I feel you. I was just wondering, then, with the credit, I know you had two, I, I got a question. I'm like, is it, is it good to do the credit repair thing? Because I heard this one person saying that, you know, when you get your credit repair, they delete a lot of stuff off your credit report, and it might be like your only good line of credit or something. So is it the best way to fix your credit doing the credit repair or is it like the only, like, I only think my credit is in debt, like, like six racks or something. So some of the stuff over at like 37 or something, like nine, is it better to just like call each one of them and start a payment on it or is it better to just 
you know, risk it and wanted to curb with her people. But why won't we really be legit and do it with them? To keep it real with you, my, my recommendation is always going to be pay your bills. You pay your bills. Whether you negotiate something, but pay your bills. But if you want to get like some real strategy, I'm I'm the mortgage guy, bro. I'm not the the credit guy. So you can hit up my credit guy um, at the credit dude on Instagram, and he probably will be better suited to answer that question. But my recommendation is always going to be: if you know you you owe the bill, you know you made the bill, pay the bill. Hey, that's just me personally. And listen, you make your bed. Listen, you you sleep in the bed. You gotta make it, right? Right. So that's just me. But if you want strategy around credit and, and all the hacks, I'm not the guy. The at the credit dude, at the credit dude on Instagram is the guy you need to hit up for strategy and hacks. Right. Right. Well, yeah, but, cause you put, like, it, it all starts with your credit, dude, right? Like you're not gonna get an SDK without the regular credit. Without the right credit, you're not going to be able to spend on without the right credit, right? Absolutely. It's it's three major factors. Credit is just one one aspect, but you also need the income to qualify for the loans too. So once you're above 600 credit score for FHA and 620 for conventional, and I'm talking FHA 203K and Fannie Mae Home Style specifically, then you know you meet that one bucket. But obviously, the higher the credit score, the better interest rate you'll get. But I look at income. That's an income ratio. That's what I really pay attention to. All right, bro. Really appreciate you, bro. Like, like for real, bro. You changed your lives. I appreciate you. That's all. You know that, bro. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you for checking in. Um, thank you so much. Like, comment, share. Make sure you tell your community to check me out. And I'm looking forward to helping you. I'm not too bro. bro. See you, bro. All right, bro. Say less. 516-881-3732 is the call-in number. 516-881-3732 is the call-in number. Um, shout out to everybody who's watching us right now. I don't know. I, yo, Erica S., you are so funny to me with this next caller and these phone emojis. You are so hilarious. Salutations to you. Um, y'all yeah, look like y'all got all types of comments going in here and jokes going on. I, I can't read all these jokes, so I'm going to have to read this later on playback. But 516-881-3732, um, it's about almost 10 o'clock right now. I've been on for like 45 minutes. If you have any questions, call in. And then, yes, Erica, who's next? Hit them with the emojis, Erica. Who is next? And if... And if you're watching this on a replay, Matthew.Garland at Flagstar.com, subject line, Fannie Mae Homestyle. If you have any questions, um, you can send me an email and I'll get to it. Or you can go to my Instagram, MG the Mortgage Guy, shoot me a DM. If we don't have any more questions, I am going to get off in a few minutes. Um, I'm trying to figure out if there's everything, did I cover everything that I want to cover? on this topic of Fannie Mae Homestyle. Listen, here's the bottom line with Fannie Mae Homestyle, people. Great loan, you, here's the pros. Great loan, you can go up to 97% financing with a single family or condo as your primary residence. If you combine Fannie Mae Homestyle with, um, with the Home Ready program, you can get down payment assistance and go up to 105% of you know financing so you can use down payment assistance with it as well um pmi is you can get rid of it once you hit 20 percent or less or more equity in your home i should say another pro is you can use it for second homes and investment properties only single family and condos for second homes and investment properties no multi-families for second homes and investment properties your LLC can be the owner on, on deed, on the investment property, post-closing, right? That's another pro. Here's the cons, right? No, another pro is 75 ARV. So when you're comparing that to a hard money loan, 75 ARV is very generous. 30-year fixed interest rates. You can do a 20-year. You can do a 15-year. That is a pro. Right, you have different options on your terms. Low interest rates, 
another pro compared to hard money or fix and flip loans. Um, cons, keeping it real. The 15% with multifamily, if it's your primary residence, that is a con, right? Most first time home buyers who want to purchase multifamilies don't have the down payment enough saved to go 15% down on a multifamily. That is a con, right? That's the, the 75 ARV, if we're comparing it to FHA 203K, 203K will give you 100% ARV. Fannie Mae will give you 75% ARV. So you can get a little, you can get more money with FHA 203K with your rehab. Fannie Mae, 75% ARV, right? But the main thing to me is the, the biggest con with it is just the two to four family. That's just the biggest con. Everything else, I'm okay with this program. It works for, like, all mortgages are a tool. I, I tell you guys this all the time. Every tool, you have to use it to your advantage. Some situations, conventional Fannie Mae home style will be better than FHA 203K. And in other situations, the 203K will be better than the Fannie Mae home style. Pick your poison, all right? 516-881-3732. Everybody, like, comment, share with your community. 516-881-3732. Hello, Matthew speaking. Hello, Matthew. How are you? I'm alive and blessed. How about yourself? My name is Cassandra. I'm calling from Miami, Florida. Cassandra um, from MIAO. Yes. Talk to I'm me. I'm calling um, in reference to the home rehab portion of the loan program. Talk to me. Um, I don't know if you can analyze the deal right now to see if my home value is work are at the, the point where it could be used to in the program. All right. I got the board right behind me. Tell me your deal. I'm, I'm here for this. All right. Um, just purchased um, in the year and last year. So we purchased for 350 Okay. Um, right now, the balance is, let me check. We only in, the balance is, I'm sorry, I should have had this ready for you. Nah, you're good, you're good. I got to fix these camera angles anyway. This is kind of like a suspect on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got my camera guy today. Like, what the hell? I'm trying to make this work, people. <laughs> the show, I wanted to cancel this, too, but the show must go on. <laughs> I'm going to do it by hand because I don't have it on me right now. So, All right, you said you purchased that from last year, right? Yeah. All right, so if you... Oh, it's not even a year yet. So you probably owe, how much did you put down? Um, we only put down 15, 1500 so. Damn. 15000 sorry. Oh, I'm about to say, what kind of program you got into? That's pretty good. <laughs> what, what kind of loan do you have right now? It's a regular conventional uh, FHA. All right, so let's just say you owe 330000 right? Because we, right. we can always fix that, right? So you owe three hundred thirty k. All right. How much is the house worth? Right now, it's up, it's up to four or two. All right, so you got a three thirty k uh, loan amount. The value you said is how much? Four or two. Four hundred and two k value. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you got like what? So that seventy seventy two. 72k okay so, so what you trying to do if i want to do the home rehab loan what what exactly how much in renovation do you need hmm. 25k so you need 25k So you got 25K of estimated rehab, right? Right. Let's 
So that will be all in 355K. All in. Right? And then you said it's worth 402. Right. All right. So, guys, how you figure out this ARV is very simple. You add the loan amount plus the rehab cost, you get 355K all in. I hope you guys are all taking notes on this. Divide that by the value of the home. Let me put value here so people at home know what I'm talking about. Divide that by 402. You got a high LTV. So right there, you're at 88% ARV. Yes. You need 75, correct. Too high for conventional, but not too high. Now, let me ask you this. You said the as is value is 402, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's worth as is. That's what it is. That's what it is. It'll appraise for if I wanted to sell for right now. That's what I have. Without the 25K in rehab. Correct. How much is the after renovated value? If you put this 25K into it, how much is the house worth? I don't know, but if I had to guess, I want to say 420. 420. Now that changes things. So, all right, guys, so we're going to change that math. So remember, her, her as is value is 402. Let me just move this out of my way. Let's not confuse people because I can see it. I can see the emails now. Right? So you saying 425 or 420? 425, 425. Because so, I know a house that's still around the corner for 450 right now. But I'm saying 425. All right. So no, after renovated value. So if she puts in this 25K, right? So now you got that. So let's do the quick math. So you do 355, divide that by the four and a quarter. You're still high. 84%. So you got an 84% ARV. So you're way too high for a conventional home style loan. Okay. Right? But, but, in the situation, now what exactly are you looking to get repaired? Honestly, I just want to have a nice deck put on the back. Um, we could get some paint and done inside, but it, it was it's only five years old. We're, we're second owner. Okay, so it's five years old, so you just want to spruce it up a little bit. Yeah. All right. So this is what you should do, right? So you're 355 all in. Now we're going to switch topics, people. Home equity line of credit. Okay. Because now you're at 355. And you said the house as is was 402. So that gives you 88%, right? So if we do a home, this is a perfect scenario for a HELOC. Okay. Home equity line of credit, not for a rehab loan, because with a home equity line of credit, I can go up to 90% of the as is value. So this conventional loan that you have right now, what's your interest rate on it? 4.75. Oh, 4.75. Thing like that, your 4.75% could get refinanced and probably get you around between, don't quote me on this. This is not a rate quote. Right. You know, I am going to tell you what the rate is because then I'm going to have to do this whole compliance song and dance and I don't feel like doing it right now. I can tell you, you can probably drop your, you can probably drop your interest rate a lot lower than where you are right now. Okay. Right? So we should look into possibly refinancing that first mortgage, getting your rate a little bit lower. But, and then once we close on the refinance, do a home equity line of credit, and we can use that same appraisal we did for, with the refinance, do a line of credit to get you that 25K and that home equity line of credit will, will be a second mortgage on your deed. Okay. And But then, now that 25K that you want to get from your home equity line of credit, if you don't use the money, you don't pay interest on it. So you only pay interest as you use that money. 
You are you familiar how a HELOC works? Yeah, I look at the terms between the loan versus the line of credit. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of what I would do. I think we use two strategies. One, save you some money on this 330 because, you you know, like you say, a year ago, rates were a little bit higher. Now they're lower. Mm -hmm. And then do the line of credit, get the money you need, do your home repairs. And if you use it for home repairs, a HELOC is still tax deductible. So it's a great thing. That's what I would do. Let's talk about this. What's your number right here? This is the number I'm calling you from. It's 305, right? Yep. Let me take this down real quick. I'm not going to say it on TV. <laughs> 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 I don't want people to be... It, sorry, guys. It's a little, I'm near my phone right now. So... What was your name again? Cassandra. Cassandra. So Cassandra, I'm going to send you a text when I get off the line. Okay. And you're in MIA, yo. That's correct. Refi and HELOC. I got you, Cassandra. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks, everybody. No problem. Thank you. I appreciate you calling in. Have a good one. All right, guys. You got a little, we, we went, we went, like I said, I don't got the cameraman today, so I'm doing this kind of ghetto, but it's all good. So, y'all got a little HELOC game in there, too, a little refi HELOC. Tell y'all, y'all need to tune into this. These are nothing but gems. Man, I was about to get off. <laughs> hey, what's up? Who's this? What up, big bro? Good hair. Who is this? This is Harris. Harris, what's up, brother? Where you calling from? Calling from New Orleans. New Orleans? Yeah. I should have been in New Orleans this week with Essence. Good God Almighty. Yeah, you already know. It's kind of uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's going on? What's going on, man? How can I help you? sound like some fraudulent ish going on um okay <laughs> that, that sounds like was he talking about like something from 2004 2005 yeah 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 because that don't yeah. sound like 2019 playboy well i heard that uh, the people's coming back for some reason uh, one of you I heard the same thing. Hey, listen, I ain't hear nothing about 2004, five or six type of activities going on. Mm -mm. What was that I hear about, though? Because I'm just curious on what, how that actually worked. Uh, what, I know they changed a uh, you know, sure how that worked, but you don't even want to get into that. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Uh -uh. I'm just curious. I leave the past in the past. You talking right... You talking wild cowboy day stuff? That's the past. I don't talk about that too much. Yeah, no, like before the crash and all that. But that's what the, I appreciate that. <laughs> you keep giving up the info, man. You doing a good job. Yeah, I only speak about right now. <laughs> tell tell your title person to kind of stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for checking in. I appreciate you. No, 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 said the, said the MG. You ain't going to have me talking about 2003, 4, 5, 6. Mm-mm. Not I. All right, I'm going to take, what time is it? 10, 15 p.m. Rants and Gems. Been about an hour right now. We got some Wild Cowboy Day stuff coming in. 
We had a little refinance slash HELOC Q&A. We spoke about the Fannie Mae Homestyle Program. Make sure you guys like, comment, share. Most importantly, subscribe, hit those notifications. Please tell all your family, your friends. Um, and give me some suggestions too. Shoot me an email, Matthew.Garland, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, dot or period, whatever you want to call it, Garland, G-A-R-L-A-N-D, at Flagstar. Uh, what is it, Flagstar.com? I don't even know my damn... Yeah, Flagstar.com, right? Shoot me an email, subject line, rants and gems topics. Tell me what you guys want to learn about, whether it's self-employed loans, uh, I have hard money coming up. Um, just tell me some topics of what you guys want to learn about, and we can we can do it live on the show. Um, he sound like Birdman hand rub. <laughs> Yo, Erica, you are fool. <laughs> Yo, it was so funny about that. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so. Send me an email if you want about topics for the rants and gems. I'll make sure I discuss it. If you want any any particular, and it just doesn't have to be mortgages. Let me know anything you want to know about taxes, insurance, you know, whatever it is that's real estate or business related. You know, I know a lot of people. I'm connected with a lot of people. I'll have some special guests come on here and we can chop it up too. But if there's no more questions tonight that's going to call in, I'm about to sign off because a brother is tired. I had a great 4th of July weekend. I hope everybody had a great weekend as well. Let's kick Let's kick the rest of 2019's You Know What. Let's finish up this last six months strong. Halftime is over. Let's get to it. If you haven't executed and purchased the property this year and you want to get pre-approved, the link will be in my description tonight. Click that link. You can try to get pre-approved, or you can send me an email telling me you're interested in getting pre-approved. If you have any questions about Fannie Mae 203K program, I mean Fannie Mae home style program, shoot me an email. Make sure that subject line says Fannie Mae home style YouTube live, something like that effect, so I can get right to it. But again, thank everybody who joined in tonight, Erica. B BK to ATL, Gemini, Stars, nothing but love for all y'all. Everybody who joined in, I appreciate you. Yes, you missed most of it. Don't worry. That's the great thing about me putting it on YouTube is you can watch it when I sign off. Unlike IG. So, I'm about to sign off. I got to get up in the morning because the brother about to lose 100 pounds and I got to get to the gym. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share with your community. Follow me on Instagram, MG the Mortgage Guy. If you have any questions, please shoot me those emails. And thank you guys again for tuning in to episode eight, Rants and Gems. I may do another Rants and Gems Thursday. So stay tuned for that. I'm working on a couple things. All right. So that's all I got for you guys. Hope you have a great night. Peace and love.